Hi, Jim. Hey, man. So the higher up just told us that we're gonna need to uh, cut some costs or sell some things. That sounds reasonable. What do you have in mind? Well, you certainly have a lot of FNAF stuff. Excuse me? I mean, you certainly could stand to lose some of it. Uh, why are you looking at me like that? Oh, okay. I'll just... I'll, I'll just go. Video games have always had merchandise. From toys, to food, to even books. I mean, it makes sense. Almost any popular medium of entertainment is going to have some stuff to sell you. It works. It's simple brand recognition. Yeah, I want a Mario book. The games were great. The problem with that mindset is, lots of these will just be for money, or don't even make sense in context. Like at face value. You might think that a Mario novel or whatever like that would be fun, but once you think about it, Mario is a very much a gameplay-oriented game. There's not much story, and the characters are simple. And when people try to change that, it usually ends up bad. Unless you're Nintendo Power. I guess comic books may make more sense for Mario. So, I'm going to first talk about the basic merchandise. You know, t-shirts, the coffee mugs, the works. There's not much to talk about. Shirts often look great. They're simple. Mugs also usually look good. Not all the time, though. Yeah, while the good ones aren't that interesting, you freaking bet the bad stuff is. Like the Sonic movie Halloween costume. A moment of silence who wore this during Halloween thinking they were the coolest guy on the block. If they even exist. And then there's the classic 80s stuff. This was back when video games were new and big companies didn't know anything about them. These were mostly held back by questionable molding. But then there's video game foods. Wow, these are gonna be great. Now these are much more interesting. Video games have actually had food based on them for a long time. Like with the Nintendo cereal system. This advertised two cereals in one. The human two long sleeves and boy OG are those cereal shapes. They were trying to be things, but it's not clear what they were looking at them. Yeah, that's the Goomba. Oh, and that's Link. And then there's the most iconic video game food. The Mario ice cream bar. Yeah, these were part of a trend where everyone ever wanted to make their characters edible. Where I come from, that's called cannibalism. The Mario one looked alright, but everyone knows Sonic's. This one is notorious for its poor quality control. Its eyes are pretty much always misplaced. I haven't had one, but I have been lucky enough to taste Spongebob, Bubbles, and Raphael from TMNT. There's also been some drinks! And there's even a Sonic one, which is simply called Speed. I saw this one on Hot Topic, and I regret not getting it. Finally, the tins. I've had a few of these in my day. I've had both type of mushrooms from Mario, the mystery block, and while technically not a tin candy, the bomb bomb dipping candy. This was basically a baby bottle pop, but infinitely better. And what makes more sense for video games to be adapted into than board games? These are actually more rare than lots of the others, actually. There's a Pac-Man board game, which seems to be somewhat faithful to the game. You even have some sound effects while playing. Street Fighter has a deck building card game, which is lame. The fighting game genre has always been one of my favorite genres for video games. But I absolutely hate deck building card games. There's plenty of Monopoly and Clue variations, not much to say about those, other than they're pretty overdone. There's also a FNAF board card game. I'm just gonna call it a card game. This is simple, but surprisingly fun. It's actually somewhat faithful to the games, which you couldn't say about Don't Wake Freddy over there. Now, video game books are actually quite common, even in the 80s and 90s. Here you have a Mario-themed choose-your-own-adventure book. Double Trouble is one of these, where there's two times the Luigi. There's actually been a crap ton of Halo novels, and a Bioshock book apparently, but then there's why I can no longer go to Barnes & Noble. The Five Nights at Freddy's series has actually had a total of 13 books. This doesn't even include the variations of the Freddy Files. First you have the novels, which are my favorite. They show an interesting and suspenseful tale of a girl named Charlie, who moved away after multiple tragedies in her childhood. In the novels, she comes back to her hometown and meets with her friends. The first novel shows them investigating the abandoned Freddy's restaurant. The second one shows Charlie going to college, and a new string of murders has arisen. 
And finally, the third one takes place after the events of the second one, where Charlie seems a bit different. And then there's the Fazbear Fight series. These are basically goosebumps, but each one has three stories and are way too frightening. I don't have time to go through all of these, but I do have to recommend Gumdrop Angel. This one has stories that totally surprised me with how dark and crazy they got. Hey man, I'm back. So since he didn't cut costs, the boss man did it himself. What did he do? He fired Daryl. You can't fire Daryl! Hey man, you didn't sell any of your FNAF stuff. I guess I do value those more.